A Fly on the Wall Street Learning about the Stock Market by Sandy Nelson Illustrated by Jarrett Beckstrin Hi there. Frederick Flyberg is my name. I was once an ordinary housefly until the day I landed on the wall of my pal Leonard. Leonard was sad because some of the kids at school were bullying him, and he felt like he didn't have any friends. Leonard looked up at me and said, Hello, my BFF. What did that mean? I wondered. Hello, my brilliant Frederick Flyberg? Leonard was actually telling me that I was his best friend forever. After that, Leonard and I became inseparable. Every summer, I watched from high upon the Main Street sign as Leonard made and sold the best snow cones in the whole world. Leonard wanted to make some money and save it so that he could buy a car one day, go to college, and in time, get a good job. Leonard's grandfather wanted his grandson to succeed. He gave Leonard advice about what to do with the money he earned from selling snow cones. Grandpa suggested that Leonard invest his money. In other words, Grandpa suggested that Leonard do something with the money so that he could make even more money instead of just keeping it in his piggy bank. Leonard was confident that by taking Grandpa's advice and investing his money, he could achieve his goals. Leonard's grandfather was right. After he invested his money and when Leonard was old enough, he was able to buy a car. By investing his money, Leonard was able to make enough money to go to college. I went to college with Leonard, of course. Goals having to do with money are called financial goals. Leonard's goal of having enough money to buy a car was a financial goal. His goal of having enough money to go to college was also a financial goal. What are some other financial goals? A goal to buy a new game system is a financial goal because money is needed to buy that game system. You may be ambitious and want to pay to take your family on a surprise vacation. Now that would be a big financial goal. Of course, Deciding to save and not spend any money is always a financial goal. Leonard has grown up now, and he has reached another one of his goals. Today, he has a very exciting and important job in a place known as Lower Manhattan, which is located in New York City. Now when Leonard goes to work, I sit high upon the sign that says, Wall Street. Today, Leonard helps other people by giving them advice about what to do with their money so that they can achieve their goals. Mr. Seymour Green is one of the people Leonard helps today. Mr. Green is Leonard's customer, or client. Leonard is Mr. Green's financial advisor. Leonard and Mr. Green have also become very good friends. Mr. Green asked Leonard to suggest ways that he can invest his money. He would like to own a company, or a corporation. Mr. Green can't afford to buy a whole company, but Leonard suggests to him that he purchase a part of a company. That's right! Leonard can help his client become a part owner of a whole corporation. Mr. Green will have to buy stock in that company, and the parts of the company he can buy are called shares of stock. Mr. Green will become a shareholder. A financial advisor like Leonard, who helps his or her clients buy shares of stock, is sometimes called a stockbroker. Stockbrokers work in places known as brokerage houses. Leonard remembers that when he was a child, his grandfather suggested he buy shares in a restaurant that sold fast food because Leonard loved to eat chicken nuggets. Leonard took Grandpa's advice and he was proud to be able to say that he was a shareholder and part owner of a restaurant. Do you have a favorite company? If you enjoy drinking soda pop, you might think about becoming a part owner of a soft drink company. If you like to go to the movies, perhaps you would like to purchase stock in a motion picture company. The shares of some of the largest and strongest companies are called blue-chip stocks. Of course, the stocks aren't actually blue, and they are not the kind of chips that you eat. Over a hundred years ago, the best stocks were given the name blue-chip because the most valuable chips, the little round disc, used in a card game named poker, were the blue ones. Can't decide which company to buy stock in? You may think about buying a mutual fund, where an investor can own stock in many companies at once. And now, if you would like to know more about how to buy stock in companies, read on. Companies that offer stock are represented by abbreviations or symbols. You may recognize some of these companies. When you buy stock, you become a part owner and an investor in that particular company. If the company makes money or is profitable, 
the value of the stock can rise or become more valuable. You can then choose to sell the stock for more than you paid for it, or you can keep or hold on to the stock and trust that the company will continue to be profitable. Leonard first became an investor in a fast food restaurant when he took some of his earnings from his snow cone business and bought three shares of the restaurant company's stock. He paid $10 for the three shares, which means he paid about $3.33 for each share. He still had the $10 in value, but his money was now in stock instead of cash. Whenever he ate chicken nuggets, Leonard thought of all the new fast food restaurants throughout the world and how many other people must also be eating chicken nuggets. Leonard believed that the fast food company must be making money or was being profitable. He was right. In several months, the price of Leonard's stock rose, or increased in value, to $4 a share. Even though Leonard paid $10 for the three shares, they were now worth a total of $12. Three shares of stock worth $4 each, that equals $12 in total. If Leonard wanted to sell all of his stock, he would have earned $2 in profit. But Leonard decided to sell just some of his stock, so he sold one of the shares worth $4. Three shares of stock together, worth $12, minus one share of stock worth $4, equals $8 worth of stock, or two shares left. After selling the share, Leonard still had $12, but $8 of his money was in stock, and $4 of his money was in cash. With the $4 cash he received when he sold the one share of stock, Leonard bought more supplies for his snow cone business. He sold so many more snow cones that he made another $10 profit in cash, Leonard was happy because he now had $18. Two shares of stock together worth $8 plus $10 cash equals $18 in total. But Leonard actually had more money than that because while he was working at his snow cone stand, the two shares of restaurant stock that he did not sell, which were worth $4 each, increased in value again and rose to be worth $5 a share. His two shares of stock were now worth $10 in total. So in fact, Leonard had $20. Two shares of stock together worth $10 plus $10 cash equals $20 in total. This time, instead of buying more supplies for his snow cone business with his cash, Leonard decided to take the $10 and buy two more shares of the restaurant stock, which remember was now worth $5 a share. Leonard still had $20, but all of the money was now in stock. Four shares of stock, each worth $5, equals $20 in total. So, Let's think about this. Leonard started out with three shares of fast food restaurant stock that he bought for $10, and in less than a year, he had four shares of the restaurant stock worth a total of $20. Leonard doubled his money. But wait, there's more. When companies are profitable, they sometimes pay dividends on each share of stock that an investor owns. The dividend is usually a small cash payment made to a shareholder each quarter of the year every three months. But the dividend can also be paid in extra shares of stock. Of course, Leonard's grandfather gave him pretty good advice to buy the restaurant stock when he did. A company stock doesn't always rise so quickly, and sometimes it doesn't rise at all. Unfortunately, stock of a company can even go down in value. Lucky, that didn't happen to Leonard's stock. Buying and selling stocks is sometimes referred to as trading stocks. The places where shares of company stock are traded are called exchanges. The New York State Stock Exchange, or NYSE, is one of the largest and busiest exchanges in the world. The National Association of Security Dealers Automated Quotations is another exchange, but all the stocks on this exchange are bought and sold through a computer network. Thank goodness the exchange is also just known as NASDAQ. To tell the difference between stocks traded on the NYSE and stocks on the NASDAQ, you usually just need to look at the symbol. Most stocks traded on the NYSE have one to three letters, and most stocks traded on the NASDAQ have at least four or five letters. For example, McDonald's stock, or MCD, is bought and sold on the NYSE, and PetSmart stock, or PTM, is bought and sold on the NASDAQ. One exception to the rule is Facebook, which trades under the symbol FB on the NASDAQ. When people hear the term Wall Street, they often think about a great big stock market, which includes the NYSE, NASDAQ, and some other exchanges, banks, and brokerage houses. 
Basically, anywhere investment business takes place can be referred to as Wall Street, even if it is not located in Lower Manhattan in New York City. Do you have a bank in your town? If so, then that bank is part of Wall Street. If you decide to buy stock in a company, how will you know if your investment is becoming more valuable? If you bought stock with the help of a financial advisor, he or she will be happy to give you current information on the value of your investment. You can also get the price of stocks or stock quotes from a newspaper or from a TV business channel, and you can always look on the internet to find the price of your stock. Stock prices are often displayed on charts and graphs, and at times you may find the price of your stock scrolling or flashing across the bottom of your TV or computer screen on what is called a ticker. Stock symbols are often called ticker symbols. The Dow is up. The Dow is down. Have you ever heard this before? The Dow, or DGIA, is short for Dow Jones Industrial Average. But don't let the name scare you. The Dow is nothing more than a list, or index, of 30 blue-chip stocks from American companies. When the Dow is up, that just means the value, or price, of the 30 stocks on the list, added all together, is more than what it was before. When the Dow is down, that means the value, or price, of the 30 stocks added together is less than it was. One minute the Dow can be up, and the next minute it can be down. When the Dow goes up, sometimes people call it a rally. Now, on to my favorite stock market terms, the bull market and the bear market. Remember, when we hear the Dow is up or the Dow is down, it means stocks are going up or down in value on a minute-by-minute chart. A bull market is when the price or value of stocks moves up over a period of time. A bear market is when the price or value of stocks moves down over a period of time. Bull markets and bear markets that move in one direction over time can last for months, or even years. A very famous statue of a bull is located in Manhattan, New York. The statue represents a bull market, of course. Now, you know more about Wall Street than many adults know. Understanding the stock market is not always easy, but learning about investing can be fun and exciting. Someday, you may want to become an investor in stock and be a part owner of a corporation. Remember, having financial goals is important. Whether you hope to have enough money to buy a car or go to college, or you dream about just having a lot of money so that you can help other people, wise investing will help you reach your goals. You may even want to think about becoming a financial advisor yourself so that you can assist other people when they want to invest their money.